two exciting things in one package. That right there is Transition's newest e-bike, the Repeater PT. It features SRAM's new powertrain. Let's check it out. So I'm here at my local trails. This is actually not my first ride. I actually brought it out yesterday evening, which was actually release day. And I'm seeing that as more of a test and tune day. I realized I had my suspension set a little too stiff. I also did a little tuning on the ride modes. It's actually just the range mode. Uh, I found it to be quite usable yesterday, just in the stock setup. But I went ahead and tuned it to have the most power that it would allow. Now it's still not the max power, but I basically wanted range to be as useful as possible. Oh yeah, I can tell I got that suspension feeling a lot better today. So I'm uh, almost a half a mile in, going up a trail called Hercules. I still haven't shifted by the way. Uh, this is a trail that, to be frank, I don't even normally try on my regular bikes. I can do it. I've done it. Uh, but that's the cool thing about e-bikes for me is that hill climbing actually becomes sort of fun. And this thing, even in range mode, you're just motoring up it. Good traction, nice and supple with that vivid air in the back over these roots. So right here it's super steep i'm gonna try rally oh wow yeah i can easily say this is the most powerful full power i've spent time on and that's in direct comparison to the ep8 uh, the latest version of the full power bosch wow so now that i've got it in uh rally it is such a fitting name it's pretty near instant power delivery and the cool thing is that is tunable in the app still not shifted by the way rally is an absolute right i've left it in the stock setup by the way so i am one mile in still haven't shifted right there i wish it were in a harder gear but it, you know it got there pretty quick and there I could feel it coast shifting, which I noticed on my ride yesterday. I actually underestimated how cool that feature would be. Like I say, I'm a mile in over now. Still haven't shifted. Squirrel about killed it. Provided you're used to bikes that have a 63.5 degree head tube angle, I think you're gonna find the repeater to be uh, pretty natural bike to get on double especially if you're used to more full power e-bikes uh, it's still got that full power fat feeling this one weighed in at about 53 and a half pounds with pedals and with the one-up tool still installed it's kind of that usual thing of you got it in the parking lot it's hard to manual it's hard to bunny hop but then when you get it out here riding it that difference really goes away i'm not going to make any sweeping conclusions about how i feel about this versus a mid power offering just yet but i have gotten where i really like those right here usually i can bunny hop still got it it's a pretty lively suspension platform it's also very plush at the same time like it's plush but still active maybe that just means it's a good middle ground but so made it through the first downhill on low line it still haven't shifted have there been some times where you know i would have done it differently yes but there's never been a single moment where i'm just begging for it to do something different 
right there I'm getting some co shifts which is awesome because I slowed way up uh, for this cliffside turn it's a huge cliff right there and I got some easier gears out of it without actually having to turn the cranks which is awesome another thing on this bike that is uh, working way better than I thought it would work is this reverb axis like the engagement on the lever is so instant all right auto shift let's see what you got here not bad yeah the reverb axis way more instantaneous than i don't know if this is like a second generation i've just never really been into them which is ironic because i've been running you know axis gx axis for like three years now but part of why i've never been enamored with the reverb axis posts is I've always thought standard reverb was one of the worst posts as far as reliability and serviceability, but also the fact that they cap out at 170 length, which assumed I would want to go longer. But you know, on this medium, the 170 is not really playing out bad. Woo, love that double. So right here it's pretty flat you do have to load up the front end of this bike more definitely tell that what was in mind for this bike and its design was stuff like the pacific northwest so right here you can hear it i'm getting some clicks of co-shift so it was instantly easier when i made it through that janky section really appreciating the fact that transition spec this with the uh, 160 mil cranks there's just absolutely no need for anything any longer on a bike like this in fact if i had my choice i would order it with 155s but these are these are doing fine so you can see here some of the steep steep stuff all right this one's steep i'm gonna give it the rally wow never had to shift i can definitely tell you that i'm already liking the auto shift more today than i did yesterday which just goes to show you that if you're trying something new be patient change is different i'm literally almost four miles in on a pretty rough section of trail still haven't shifted just crazy now this hill is next to impossible on a regular bike i've done it but it maxes me out come on shift easier there we go nice like to climb this on a regular bike and personally redlined some 9.6 in still not shifted i'm definitely not trying to make this whole thing about the auto shift it's just a very interesting feature I'm an interesting guy on sizing. I've pretty much always been sort of between a medium and a large. But here recently, as an example, I built up a large Sentinel. This is my sort of big pedal bike. I'm uh, currently testing out one of the new Norco fluids also in a size large. Those bikes feel like they fit me like a glove. But with this one being so slack, that front wheel is quite a ways out in front. It's really not bad with it being a medium. If I were able to pick for myself, I would still pick a large. Ah, giving me the easier gears. Pretty good there. Right here, like I need it harder, quicker. It gets there. Just in that situation, it wasn't soon enough down straight up see in there it just can't predict that quick steep if you're going to ride this well i think you would have the auto shift on but you would make it a couple of gears easier in anticipation but that co-shift that's where it's at it just seems like it's able to predict pretty well what you're going to need when you finish coasting which is cool this is a pretty big hit 
This thing just soaks it right up. Listen at how quiet this bike is. This is one of our rougher, jankier sections. There's absolutely no motor noise, which absolutely cannot be said of its main rivals. Ooh, that's a big drop. So I'm motoring up one of our newer jump lines. You can see I just rolled over 20 miles. If you do want to disable the auto shift, it's as simple as pushing and holding this left upper pod controller button and auto shift is off. Now we can just shift just like you've got a regular SRAM transmission setup. And in 20 miles, I took basically no shifts. That literally replaced what I assume would be hundreds, maybe upon hundreds of shifts. All right. We get a first pull on our newest, biggest jumps. Doesn't really include these. The big boys come on down the line. This is a nice, neat warm up, though. So far, so good. Woo! I've not cleared these this well on anything yet. Woo! kind of out of gas by that last one forgive me for sort of casing that one but on the whole i ran into that whole line way better than i have on anything yet for people that say that they just can't see how these big bikes would jump i think they jump better all right 31.3 miles in but i'm gonna climb a trail that's actually rarely ridden the locals call cow's face this is a strain for even the best e-bikes that I've brought up this trail. I'm actually going to put it back up into rally for the steepest part up here. All right, here it is. Actually, so far, so good. Just doing it in range mode. I mean, I'm just spinning the cranks and it's just going. Unbelievable how much pull and how much power this thing has. Like, it is just motoring up it in the weaker setting. All right, here's rally. Definitely gives a nice little boost. So I'm having to put out, but very impressed with that output right there. We're uh, just short of 32 miles in, and I'm showing right at 11% left. This is sort of a last but not least, I'm gonna knock out High Roller Flow Trail. Woo! Such good pop out of the rear end of this bike. But just such good progression. Man, that felt really good, especially for a first pull. Loving it. Man, this feels good. Woo! Probably wasn't the fastest, but that is definitely one of the most fun pulls down high roller that I've had in quite some time. One for sure negative. This little 12 ounce bottle is all that will fit inside this medium frame. All right, so I'm at 34.2 miles. I'm showing 3% battery left and just had a sudden significant reduction in power it's uh it's put me into limp mode i knew i was pushing my luck it has been an awesome ride and i'm actually pretty impressed with that range and when it switches to one percent you're actually on your own good thing i am within 102 yards of the trailhead range at time of complete empty 
just over 36 miles. All right, let me mix, no bones about it. This has been the most fun full power e-bike that I've ever spent time on. The power delivery is absolutely fantastic. It is near instant. The overrun is almost non-existent, meaning it's on when you need it, it's off when you don't. And the amount of power is very impressive. I would still stand by the fact that I think it's the most powerful full power system that I've ever ridden. 34 miles of range before limp mode, a little over 36 total to me is super impressive, especially paired with about 5,000 feet of vertical. The repeater, the actual bike, aside from the powertrain is absolutely dialed. The suspension kinematics just feel so progressive, so capable, but still nice and supple across the rough. The geometry, especially for bigger riding, seems really dialed. And for me, the powertrain is nothing short of impressive. If you give it a chance, it is actually a very impressive feature. Is it flawless? Is it perfect? Absolutely not, but I don't think SRAM really claimed that it was. I think the sweet spot would be giving it some shifts in anticipation for those super abrupt steeps. And probably one of the best aspects for me of the new motor specifically is that it is basically noiseless as you're riding down rough sections of trail. I'm not talking about the motor output noise. I'm talking about motor rattle that is very prominent in other full power systems. It does not rattle while it's going down the trail. Say it would be cool to try this setup with more of like a Fox 36 or a Lyric and a slightly steeper head tube angle for the train that I'm riding. Having that just slightly more lightweight setup with all of this power would be absolutely ridiculous. I'm also still waiting for transition to ever offer a gloss finish on a carbon bike. That being said, this one to me is drop dead gorgeous in this sort of matte black finish. So if you're looking for a full power e-bike and you have the budget for it, I definitely think the new Repeater PT should be on your radar. It's the ride that you would expect from transition coupled with some of the coolest technology that I think exists on a bike, the new powertrain. Hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you will. As always, thanks for watching.